Okay, so a lot has happened to the wiring on this. Uh, I didn't document all the steps as there was a lot of head scratching going on. And I had some help doing this. So kind of got it running and then I kind of worked out the DC system afterwards. But I'll go through how I got the wiring harness stator and CDI from a 1987, I believe, Excel 3 into this 1980. ET340 Deluxe. So stator goes in the exact same. Uh, the CDI mounts the same. You just gotta set the timing on the stator. And then the wiring harness is set up a little bit differently. The sleds are a little bit different uh, dimensionally where the wires end up. So for the stator side, it just plugs directly in. All those match. Ignition coil plugs in the same way there. When it gets to the headlight, it goes to one of these uh, Yazaki plugs. And I had to make an adapter from that to the H4 standard on the headlight. I'm using an LED one in this case, but I just had to make this little bit of extension. For the gauge lights, I made another harness that comes down and it picks up the power for that gauge back here on a blue wire here. Just have a bullet connector there. The connections at the CDI are all stock. The connections down at the voltage regulator and electric start are all stock. Uh, the differences at the control side, th there wasn't a whole lot. Uh, most of the, like the lighting and switch and stuff use the same plugs. The kill switch plug was kind of this old square style and the new one has a Izaki and there's a third wire in there for I think a throttle cutoff or something like that. So I just made a little adapter that goes between the two, cut this off from my old harness and uh, yeah, had Izaki, uh, I guess the female end, just made a short little connector there and just omitted that third wire that I don't need there. Um, I just bundled this up, but this is yellow and black and yellow and black. I, this is the wires for the grip warmers when I when I want them or use them or whatever I want extra power for. I have that there now. Like I said, the blue wire for the lighting, everything else kind of it, it's not tucked back where it's going to end up, but it's connected. So that that's pretty much it for the stock wiring. It all went together pretty simple. Now the modifications I had to make for the converting it to DC on the lighting side, there's a little bit more to that. So the harness coming down from the gauge light has a dedicated ground and then that ground splices into the headlight. So this little connector I made separated the ground that comes from the harness. Uh, it just terminates in this plug doesn't go anywhere but the ground coming from the H4 plug goes into this new harness I made specifically for the DC stuff. And then where it comes down to the stator, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, just got some more light brought you in closer. So this is the stock connection. Um, the yellow, black, and white with red stripe wire coming out of the stator. And going into the harness connects through one of these uh, Yazaki plugs. So what I did, I need to I needed to grab the yellow wire only for my harness. So I just made an in-between adapter and it basically extracts the yellow wire. So the the yellow wire it, it, from the harness dead ends in this plug. There's no pin for it. So when I plug this into the stator, I'm plugging in all the way for now because I gotta reroute this, but just give you an idea. So now I've basically tapped the yellow off and that yellow goes, follows my harness. And then I'll kind of show you what I did at the other end of this. Okay, so that harness, it, uh, it branches off here to grab this blue uh, lighting wire here. I realized that on the, the bridge rectifier I put in there, it ends up feeding into that same blue wire. So I could have ran this down to the end of the harness, but I didn't realize that at the time. 
And then I will have to unplug the rest of this, I think, to show you. So give me a second. So this part's going to be a little harder to follow it because I switched up the wire colors as they came out the, the harness. So what's happened here is that yellow wire that we took off the stator, it's coming in and it's splitting into this wire that we are uh, feeding into the voltage regulator to kind of dump the excess voltage. And then it also feeds into this fused switch, uh, 15 amp fuse in that guy. And then, sorry, fuse holder. And then, so just imagine that this is yellow still. It goes into one of the AC terminals on the bridge rectifier. I don't think it matters which one, just one of the AC terminals. And then the other AC terminal just goes to ground, which in this case, my bracket just kind of mounts to the voltage regulator, voltage regulator stud, which is also where its ground wire terminates. So there's two ground wires on that stud when it's, when it's bolted down underneath there. And then the negative from the DC, which is kitty corner to the positive on the DC. So this negative, feeds into my custom harness. So the, the, the negative from the bridge rectifier is isolated from the rest of the negative uh, on the chassis and ground everywhere else. Sorry, ground wire, I should say. And then this little extra pigtail coming off of this is going into just to, just to feed the tail light. And so what I did on the stock harness is I, I think it's here, yeah, I just, I just uh, isolated that wire going to the tail light, put a, pull it, put a bullet connector on there so that I can feed the tail light its own ground. And the other ground just kind of goes through the harness. Like I said, blue wire is lighting hot for the gauges. So AC, one side of that goes here. One side goes through the fuse connection. And then the positive DC feeds into the stock uh, lighting hot, which normally is what goes to the voltage regulator. So you unplug the blue wires coming from the voltage regulator, rectifier DC positive goes into the harness side, and then the, the branch off the yellow wire goes into the voltage regulator side of that blue wire connection. I think that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna run my harness. I just have it here for now, but I'm gonna run it underneath the motor uh, along the same route as the stock harness. I'm gonna do some cable management, tuck things away and clean it up. And uh, yeah, should be pretty much ready here. But hopefully that's not too confusing. Uh, I know it was a little difficult for me to figure out how I was gonna do this. I wanted to keep the stock harness as stock as possible. I ended up modifying it quite a bit. So I don't know if it makes sense to make a whole separate harness in order to achieve this, but it seems like a good way to do it because I can unplug all the DC stuff, plug in the stock AC lighting and, and go back to that. So this worked for me, but it might not be for everybody. Okay, I think I'm all done. I'm just gonna go over how I uh, routed these cables. So starting up here on the gauge, it follows the speedo cable down, uh, meets up with the headlight portion and continues under this little box. From there, it uh, connects to this stator wiring, grabs the yellow and goes underneath the motor, comes up this side following the stock harness, and then that one blue wire jumps up there, and the rest of it is down there. You might be able to see where I have the rectifier there. It's just on, yeah, there you can see it. It's just on the voltage regulator stud. It's a bit of a Bird's nest of wires down there right now, but uh, should work. I think that's it. Oh, and I got the battery wired in too, I guess. Okay, so I want to see what the 
lights look like. Uh, these are the LED bulbs with the stock wiring and uh, so that I'll have a before and after. So I'll start it up, turn off the lights and take a look at them. Trying to get a better look at the gauge light and headlight with this. Okay, so this is what it looks like with the DC wiring in place. Again, from closer up. 